So we are going to go over the fundamentals of partial derivatives. Now, a lot of times when we do multivariable calculus, what we're trying to do is take an idea from single variable calculus and extend it to the case of more than one variable. So in this case, we're going to look at the function f equals one minus x squared minus y squared and figure out how we can take the derivatives of this function in a way that makes sense. So let's start off by remembering how we did derivatives of single variable functions. In this case, if we're looking at f of x equals one minus x squared, and we want to take the derivative, we would say f prime of x is equal to the limit as dx approaches zero. A lot of calculus textbooks will use h here, but I'm going to use dx, of f of x plus dx minus f of x over dx. So dx is just a very small change in x, and we're seeing what happens to the slope of this line here as it approaches zero. So graphically what this looks like is when we take a look at the function one minus x squared like this, the derivative at a particular point is going to be the slope of the tangent line that passes through the point. So the way that we take derivatives of single variable functions is we look at what happens if we take very small changes in an input to the function. So let's try to extend that to our two variable case when we have one minus x squared minus y squared. Well, the issue here is in this case, when we talk about small changes, there's really only one direction that our function can change. It's going to go in this horizontal direction. But if we think about f of x, y equals one minus x squared minus y squared, there's not just a one dimensional range of values, there's a two dimensional range. So if we want to take our single variable derivative and make it two variables in a way that makes sense, we're going to have to pick a line and say we're only looking at changes along that particular line. So in this case, let's see what happens if we take our line to be the x axis. So we're only looking at changes of the x value and we're leaving y as it is. In that case, we would write the derivative as f sub x of x, y, and this is called the partial derivative of f with respect to x. That's going to equal the limit as dx approaches zero of f of x plus dx comma y minus f of x, y over dx. So notice this definition is almost the exact same as our original definition for a single variable function. All we're doing is putting comma y next to each of those inputs. Again, all we're doing is looking at very small changes in the input to x and seeing how that affects the output of the function. Now I'm going to hop into MATLAB for a second and we'll take a look at what this means graphically. So here on the left side, you can see the graph of the function we're looking at, which is f of x, y equals one minus x squared minus y squared. Now in order to figure out the partial derivative with respect to x, what we want to do is consider y to be a constant value and then look at what happens as we change the value of x and how that affects the height of our function. So in order to see that better, what I'm going to do is take a slice of this function, which we're going to look at on the right. So now on the right side of the screen, you can see our same function, but I've taken a black and white plane and sliced it through. What this allows us to do is consider, notice on the y-axis, this plane goes through a constant value of, in this case, y equals one. So what we can do is move our view so that we're looking at just how the values of x are changing in this slice of y. When we do that, we can see that the outline of our graph in the x direction looks very much like a parabola, which is because it does follow the shape of a parabola. So if we take the partial derivative, what we're doing is looking at this flat slice where y is a constant value and seeing as we do minor changes in x here, how is that going to affect the height of our function? That's the goal of the partial derivative. We just look at constant values of one variable and observe small changes in the other variable. So that's how partial derivatives work when we're looking at functions of two variables. To finish up, we're going to take a look at one example where we actually calculate the partial derivative of this function. Now, just like we can denote a partial derivative by taking the function f and putting a letter on the bottom, in this case, f sub y is the partial derivative with respect to y, we can use a different notation to say the same thing, which looks like this. These tilted d's right here are called del, 
It's just a D, but we tilt the stem a little bit. And this is saying, just like we would normally say DF, DY with the normal letter D, in this case, we're taking the partial derivative of F with respect to Y, and that's what those tilted Ds represent. If we want to do that with our function here, remember with a partial derivative, we say everything that's not Y is a constant. So one was already a constant, but in this case, X is also a constant. So when we do this derivative, the derivative of a constant is zero, and therefore this part goes away, and this part goes away. All we're left with is the derivative of negative Y squared, which is negative 2y. If we wanted, for example, the partial derivative with respect to x of sine of xy, well, what this means is anything that's not x is a constant. So in this case, y is going to be a constant. When we do this, first we take the derivative of the outer function, that'll be cosine of xy, and then by the chain rule, we're going to need the derivative of the inside function with respect to x. In that case, when we differentiate x, it goes away and we're just left with our constant, which is y. So our final result is y times the cosine of xy. And that's how we do partial derivatives. We look at our 3D graph, we take a two-dimensional slice where one of the inputs is constant, and then we look at changes in the other input, just like we would with an ordinary derivative.